Hello everyone. So I am going to discuss um, public fiscal administration in line with our course PS212 Philippine Public Administration. So first we have to define what is fiscal administration. Fiscal administration is the act of managing incoming and outgoing monetary transactions and budgets of governments, educational institutions, non-profit organizations, and other public service entities. Also, it refers to systems, processes, resources, and the policy, environment, government, the intergovernmental and interlocal fiscal relation affecting among others. So the following are first the giving of allotments and grants by the national government to local government units. Second is sharing of taxing powers between the national government and the LGUs and among the LGUs units. Third is a policy on tax rates and structures. Fourth is revenue and expenditure planning. Fifth is revenue utilization and expenditure allocation. Sixth is monitoring and approval of budgets, tax, tax ordinances, and other fiscal measures. And lastly is the policy on borrowing and borrowing instruments and appointment and supervision of local fiscal officers. These are the principal agencies tasked with fiscal functions. First, we have the Congress, which is the lower house, um, which they are responsible for revenue and expenditure policies. Also, we have the Department of Finance, which they are responsible for the revenue generation and collection to fund custody and disbursements and keeping of accounts. We have also the Department of Budget and Management wherein they review of estimates and fiscal policy studies in close consultation with the National Economic Development Authority or the NEDA. And lastly is the Commission on Audit um, which they conduct fund and performance audit to situate that the expenditures are in accordance with the appropriation law approved. So these are the fiscal control mechanism. When we say fiscal control, it is an economic policy in which a government intentionally avoid deficit spending. First is we have prevent misappropriation of funds. It requires review and approval by the administrative official of the line or operating agency of all requests for money releases and budgetary allotments. Vouchers and similar papers before payments are made so that expenditures are in accordance with policy and law and not illegal, irregular, unnecessary, unconscionable, extravagant, and excessive. Second is we have control to implement prospective policy, which is the proactive administration inhibits governmental units from directly transacting and negotiating money matters since such kind of transaction is officially channeled through the Department of Budget and Management in the form of budget estimates as endorsed by the President. Third is to ensure the wisdom of propriety of expenditures. Claims for payment from public funds, legality, prudence, reasonableness, the morality of the claim or charge should be established. A review of existing contracts and transactions should be made. And lastly is to prevent deficit. Fiscal supervision and control may be useful but should not unduly interfere with agency prerogative to carry out programs mandated by the Constitution and the laws. So the Philippine Public Fiscal Administration, the budget, the Philippine National Budget, represents the estimate of expected income 
and projected expenditures over a period of time, and it is referred to as a fiscal year. First is to spend for its programs and projects, and second is where the money will come from. And according to Section 22, Article 7 of the 1987 Constitution, sets the tone for budgetary process. And under this article, the President, which is the Executive, submits to Congress within 30 days from the beginning of every regular session a financial plan of expenditures and sources of financing, including the receipts from existing and proposed revenue measures as basis for general appropriation bill. So why is there a need of government budgeting? Again, government budgeting is the allocation of public funds to attain the economic and social goals of the country. It also entails the management of government expenditures to create the most impact from the production and delivery of goods and services. Government budgeting is very important because it enables the government to plan and manage its financial resources to support the implementation of various programs and projects that best promote the development of the country. Through the budget, the government can prioritize and put into action its plans, programs, and policies within the constraints of its financial capability. Budgeting for national government involves four distinct phases. You have the budget preparation, um, budget registration or authorization, budget execution or implementation, and lastly is the budget accountability. While they are distinctly separate, these processes overlap in implementation during a budget year. So budget preparation for the next budget year proceeds while government agencies are executing the budget for the current year. At the same time, the state is engaged in budget accountability as it reviews the past year's budget. Then, there are four phases in managing the budget or the national budget and the budget cycle starts with the budget preparation, second is the budget legislation, third is the budget execution, and lastly is budget accountability. First cycle in the budget cycle in national budget is the budget preparation. So we have first the budget call. At the beginning of the budget preparation year, the Department of Budget and Management, or the DBM, issues the national budget call to all agencies, including state universities and colleges, and a separate corporate budget to budget call to all GOO, GOCCs and GFIS. The budget call contains budget parameters including macroeconomic and fiscal and agency budget ceilings as set beforehand by the Development Budget Coordination Committee or the DBCC and policy guidelines and procedures in preparation and submission of agency budget proposals. Under the Aquino administration, the DBM has established a new tradition of the beginning of the budget preparation phase earlier. To ensure that the national budget is enacted on time, under the new budget preparation calendar, the budget call is issued in December or January versus around April in the past. And the submission of the president's budget a day after the State of the Nation's Address or the SONAT in contrast to earlier practice where it is submitted during late in the 30-day window that the Constitution prescribes. Second is the stakeholder engagement. It is a new feature in budget preparations which seek to increase citizen participation in the budget process. Departments and agencies are tasked to partner with civil society organizations and other citizen stakeholders as they prepare their agency budget proposals. This new process was piloted in preparations of the 2020-12 national budget is now being expanded towards institutionalizations.
In budget preparation, we also have this bottom-up budgeting. The bottom-up budgeting program was set in 2013 to help the Philippines attain its millennium development goals of inclusive growth and poverty reduction. Now, two years later, the Department of Budget and Management is holding a two-day summit to show how far the project has come. The Aquino government through the cabinet cluster on human development and poverty reduction. A bottom-up budget was first implemented in the 2013 national budget during the Aquino administration and the plans to extend the program's reach and ensure the sustainability of the bottom-up budget enabled gains, beginning with the 2D Summit to assess and reaffirm the program's progress. Under the 2015 budget, BUB covers 1,590 municipalities and cities across the country and is price supported with a budget of $20.9 billion. For the 2016, the administration is proposing a budget of $24.7 billion to support the implementation of more than 14,300 BUB projects nationwide. So this is just an example um, of the bottom-up budgeting. So why is there a need of bottom-up budgeting? Bottom-up budgeting is meant to empower our grassroots communities and their respective local governments. That's why we've made improvements to the program by allowing LGUs to directly implement projects instead of coursing them through the agencies. This is also strength to link of accountability between our LGUs and their constituents. The BUD approach was set up to help the Philippines attain its Millennium Development Goals of Inclusive Growth and Poverty Reduction, all while promoting good governance at the local level. This is done by increasing citizens' access to local service delivery via a demand-driven budget planning process. Next is the Program Expenditure Classification or the Pre-XC. This approach is adopted by President Duterte administration. A reform that restructured the current budget by grouping activities and projects under major programs or key strategies. Through this innovation, the government will be able to assign performance targets, both outputs and outcomes at the level of programs. This way, the direct link between strategies, budgets, and intended results will be clearer and program monitoring and evaluation can provide evidence-based assessments. Third is the technical budget hearing. These are conducted after departments and agencies submit their agency budget proposal to the BBM. Here, agencies defend their proposal budget before a technical panel of DBM based on the performance indicators on output targets and absorptive capacity. DBM bureaus then review the agency proposals and prepare recommendations. Fourth is the executive review. The recommendations are presented before an executive review board which is composed of the DBM secretary and the senior officials. Deliberations here entails a careful prioritization of programs and corresponding support. The priority agenda of the national government. Also, implementation issues are also discussed and resolved during the executive review. Fifth is the consolidation, validation, and confirmation. The, the DBM then consolidate the recommended agency budgets and recommendations into the National Expenditure Program and a budget of expenditures as a source of financing. As part of the consolidating process, the deliberations by the DBCC de determine the agency and sectoral allocation of the approved total expenditure ceiling in line with the macroeconomic and fiscal program. Heads of major departments are invited to this meeting. Next is the presentation to President and Cabinet. The proposed budget is presented by DBM together with the DBCC to the President and Cabinet for further refinements of prioritization. 
After the President and Cabinet approve the proposed National Expenditure Plan, the DBM prepares and finalizes the budget documentation to be submitted to the Congress. And the President's Budget. The budget preparation phase ends with the submission of the proposed national budget or the present budget to Congress. The President's budget consists of the following documents which help legislators analyze the contents of the proposed budget. The President's budget consists of the following documents which help legislators analyze the contents of the proposed budget. First is we have the President's budget message. Um, this is the President's explain the policy framework and the priorities in the project. Second is the budget of expenditures and sources of financing. Mandated by the Constitution, this contains the macroeconomic assumptions, public sector context, including overviews of LGU and GOCC financial positions, breakdown of the expenditures and funding sources for fiscal year and two previous year. Thirdly is the National Expenditure Program. This contains the details spending for each department and agency by program, activity or project, and is submitted in the form of Proposed General Appropriations Act. Fourth is the details of selected programs and projects. This contains a more detailed disaggregation of key programs, projects, and activities in the National Expenditure Program, especially those in line with the National Government's Development Plan. And staffing summary. This contains summary of the staffing complement of each department and agency, including number of positions and amounts allocated for the same. Second cycle in our budget cycle is the budget legislation, or the second step in the budget cycle is the budget legislation. It also called the budget authorization phase. This starts upon the House Speaker receipt of the President's budget and ends with the President's enactment of the General Appropriations Act or the GAA. So in this pro um, step, the House of Representatives in plenary assigns the President's budget to the House of Appropriations Committee. The committee and its subcommittee then scheduled and conduct hearing on the budgets of the departments and agencies and scrutinize the respective programs and projects and then crafts the general appropriation bill. In plenary session, the general appropriation bill or GAB is sponsored, presented, and defended by the appropriation committee and subcommittee chairman. As in all other laws, the general appropriation bill is approved on the second and third reading before transmission to the Senate. Always remember that in the first reading, the President's budget is assigned to the Appropriations Committee. So we have House Deliberation. As in the House process, the Senate conducts its own committee hearing and plenary deliberations on the General Appropriation Bill. Budget deliberation in the Senate formally start with the House of Representatives transmits the General Appropriation Bill. For expediency, however, the Senate Financing Committee and Subcommittees usually starts hearing on General Appropriation Bill even House deliberations are ongoing. The committee submits its proposed amendments to the General Appropriation Bill to plenary only after it has been formally transmitted by the House. Next, you have the Senate deliberations. As in the House process, the Senate conduct its own committee hearing and plenary deliberation on the GAB or the GAB. The budget deliberations in the Senate formally start after the House of Representatives transmits the General Appropriation Bill for, for expediency, however, the Senate Finance Committee usually starts hearing on the General Appropriation Bill even as House deliberations are ongoing. The committee submits its proposed amendments to the GAB. The committee submits its proposed amendments to the General Appropriation Bill to plenary only after it's been formally transmitted by the House. Next, we have the bicameral deliberation. Once both House of Congress 
have fin finished their deliberations, they will each constitute a panel to the bicameral conference committee. This committee will then discuss and harmonize the conflicting provisions of the House and Senate versions of the General Appropriation Bill. A harmonized version of the General Appropriation Bill is thus produced. Next, we have the ratification and enrollment. The harmonized or bicam version is then submitted to both houses, which will the vote to ratify the final General Appropriation Bill submission to the president. Once submitted, the president was submitted to the president for his approval. The general appropriation bill is considered enrolled. Next, also we have the veto message. The president and the DBM then review the general appropriation bill and prepare a veto message, where budget items subjected to direct veto or conditional implementations are identified, and where the general observations are made. And under the Constitution, the General Appropriation Bill is the only legislative measure where the President can impose a line veto. In all other cases, a law is either approved or vetoed in full. Next, we have the reenactment. When the GAA is not enacted before fiscal year starts, the previous year's GAA is automatically enacted. This means that the agency budget for programs and activities and projects remain the same and funding for programs and projects that have been already been terminated is realigned for other expenditures because reenactments are tedious and prone to abuse. The third process in our budget cycle is the budget execution. This is where the people's money is actually spent as the GAA or the General Appropriation Act is enacted. The government can implement its priority programs and projects. In project execution, we have these release guides and programs. The budget execution phase begins with the DBM's issuance of guidelines on the release of utilization of the funds. Second is the budget execution documents. Agencies are required to, sub to submit their budget execution documents at the start of the budget execution. These documents outline agency plans and performance targets. These budget execution documents include the physical and financial plan, monthly cash program, estimate of monthly income, and list of obligations that are not yet due and demandable. Third is allotment and cash release program. To ensure that the releases fit the approved fiscal program, the DBM prepares an allotment release program or the ARP to set a limit for allotments issued to an agency and on the aggregate. The ARP of each agency corresponds to the total amount of agency's specific budget under the GAA, as well as automatic appropriations. A cash release program is also formulated alongside that to accept the guide for disbursement levels for the year and for every month. Allotment, allotment release. Allotments which authorize an agency to enter into an obligation are either released by the DBM to all agencies comprehensively through agency budget matrix or the ADM and even individually via special allotment release orders or the SAROs. Agency budget matrix. This document disaggregates all program appropriations for each agency into two main expenditure categories. First is not needing clearance and needing clearance. The ABM or the agency budget matrix is the comprehensive allotment release documents for appropriation which do not need clearance or those who have been already been itemized and fleshed out in the General Appropriation Act. The allotment release orders or the SAROs identified as needing clearance are those which require the approval of the DBM or the president, as the case may be, for instance, lump sum funds and confidential and intelligence funds. For such item, an agency needs to submit a special budget request to the DBM with supporting documents. Once approved, the SARO is issued. Also, we have in budget execution is the incurring obligations. In implementing programs and activities and projects, 
agencies incur liabilities on behalf of the government. Obligations are liabilities legally incurred which the government will pay for. These or there are various ways that the agency obligates. For example, when it hires staff, an obligation to pay salaries, of course, receive billings for the use of utilities or enters into a contract with an entity for the supply of goods and services. The GAA as allotment release. The fiscal example, the fiscal year 2017, budget aims to facilitate the achievement of meaningful national development goals as emphasized by the Duterte administration. The implementation of real change is anchored on the timely and appropriate execution of this budget. In particular, the policy of using the General Appropriation Act as an allotment order shall continue to be adopted to ensure the immediate implementation of programs and projects and activities. In so doing, resource and predictability and delays in program project implementation are reduced. Likewise, credibility and transparency in the budget process is expected to be further enhanced. Next is the cash allocation. It is to authorize an agency to pay the obligation it incurs. DBM issues a disbursement authority. Most of the time, it takes the form of a notice of cash allocation, NCA, in special cases, the Non-Cash Availment Authority, the NCAA, and Cash Disbursement Ceiling for the seeds. The Notice of Cash Allocation This is a cash authority issued periodically by the DBM to operating units of agencies to cover their cash requirements. The NCA specifies the maximum of amount of cash that can be withdrawn from a government servicing bank for the period of indicated. The release of NCAs by the DBM is based on the agency's submission of its monthly cash program and other required documents. Other disbursement authorities. In contrast to NCAs, non-cash availment authority or NCAA are issued to authorize non-cash disbursement and cash disbursement ceiling are minimal issued to departments with overseas operations, allowing them to use income collected by their foreign posts for their operating requirement. And the disbursement. This is the final step of the budget execution phase, where government monies are actually spent. The modified disbursement scheme is mostly used where disbursement of national government agency chargeable against the treasury are made through government services such as the land bank of the Philippines. The budget process, of course, does not end with government agencies spend public funds. Each and every peso must be accounted for to ensure that it is used properly, contributing to the achievement of social economic goals. And the last step in the budget cycle is the budget accountability. This happens alongside the budget execution phase. Through budget accountability, the DBM monitors the efficiency of fund utilization, assesses agency performance, and provides a vital basis for reforms and new policies. So in budget accountability, we have performance and target outcomes. Agencies are held accountable not only for how these use public funds ethically, but also on how these attain performance targets and outcomes using available resources. These performance measures are set alongside the preparation of the national budget and these are indicated on the OPIF Book of Outputs. Prior to the execution of the enacted national bill, these performance targets are framed up during the preparation of the BEDs or the bids. Budget accountability reports. Submitted by agencies on a monthly and quarterly basis, budget accountability reports are required reports that show how agencies use their funds and identify their corresponding physical accomplishments. 
These include quarterly physical and financial report of operations, quarterly incomes, a monthly statement of allotments, obligations and balances, and a monthly report of disbursement. No report, no release. Starting 2012, the DBM will be withholding certain fund releases to agencies. No report, no release. Starting 2012, the DBM will be holding certain fund releases to agencies if these fail to submit their budget accountability reports. In particular, this will be funds from into miscellaneous personal benefits fund for compensation adjustments under the salary standardization law, provisions for unfilled, posi unfilled positions, and employee clothing allowances. These funds, funds to be withheld are only limited to agencies, miscellaneous personal benefit fund allotments to show that the only agencies are penalized and that the implementation of critical programs and projects will be not disrupted. Iran and compliant agencies will also be posted online for public scrutiny. Next in the budget accountability is the review of agency performance. The DBM regularly reviews the financial and physical performance of agencies. Actual utilization of funds and physical accomplishments are indicated in the agency's bars or evaluated against their targets as identified by a OPIF in the agency's BEDs. Agency performance review are conducted quarterly or every semester, as the case may be. An annual budget performance assessment is conducted to determine each agency's accomplishments and performance by the year end. The DBM regularly reports the results to the president. Audit. Auditing is not within the DPM's jurisdiction and is instead lodged under the Commission on Audit or the COA. Nonetheless, auditing is critical in ensuring agency accountability in the use of public funds. The DBM uses COA's audit reports in confirming agencies' performance, determining budgetary levels for agencies, and addressing issues in fund usage. And lastly, in the budget accountability is the performance-based in incentive system. The Department of Budget and Management, or the DDM, is also in the process of establishing a performance-based incentive system, which will recognize and reward good performance among government employees to help improve the efficiency of service delivery across all government and institutions. And that's the end of my topic, which is the public fiscal administration. Thank you and God bless.